The ocean is at breaking point. Radical steps are needed to preserve the precious ecosystems of the sea. But can part of this battle be fought on land? Mangroves are evolutionary marvels. They're a critical part of most tropical oceanic ecosystems. But they're rapidly disappearing. One coastal community in southern Kenya has found a pioneering way to protect their mangroves, turning the tide on its dwindling forest by harnessing one of the mangroves' most impressive superpowers, kept hidden deep underground. It's early morning, and some of the residents of Ghazi Bay are making their way deep into the heart of a mangrove forest. They're here to conduct a health check on this dense ecosystem. Let's go there. Oh, that is still rocky. Let's look for a spot here. Lillian is a lead scientist who works with the local community. The forest cover, what do you think, guys? I think 80 to 100 percent. Mangroves grow along tropical coastlines, and they're the only type of tree to thrive in salt water. Where we are can be a bit deceiving. You might assume we are in a normal terrestrial forest, but the tides influence this place. The team has until noon to carry out its checks before the forest floor floods with water. The mangroves of Ghazi Bay stretch out over 615 hectares. But today, the team is only concentrating on one small patch. They are setting out a 10 by 10 plot. They're checking the biomass of the trees and for signs of new growth. That's about seven, eight, about nine meters. Mangroves are important for the health of the ocean. The nutrient-rich, sheltered water provides nursery habitats for numerous marine species. Another very important aspect we look at is the biodiversity. So when we come to the forest, we want to see how many crabs do we have? Are they within the acceptable range? What kind of species do we have? Mangroves also help to keep the ocean clean. Their tangled root system filters dirty water as it flows into the sea. We are looking at 1.3 meters from the ground. So about here, there's no prop roots uh, above this point, so we are going to take our diameter here. But forests like these have another superpower that can help tackle one of the oceans and the planet's greatest threats, climate change. One of the key functions of mangroves is to act as natural carbon stores. And they are globally significant in that function. Mark Huxham is based in Edinburgh, but he spent much of his career knee deep in mangrove forests around the world, including in Ghazi Bay. Typically, mangroves bury and store far more carbon than terrestrial forests. For example, at our site in Kenya, there's somewhere between six and eight times more carbon buried in the sediment than you'd expect in the soils of a tropical forest. All trees need carbon dioxide to grow. As they absorb it from the atmosphere, carbon becomes locked within the tree's leaves, branches and roots. Parts of the tree eventually fall off into the soil where they decompose, releasing some of their CO2 back into the atmosphere. But mangroves are different. Their tangled network of roots traps this carbon-rich plant material in their waterlogged soil, sealing it off from the atmosphere. This vault of carbon can remain secure for millennia, as long as the mangrove forests remain intact. But here's where the problem lies. Barely half the world's original mangroves remain. Mangroves are being lost around the world because of human impact. Uh, in the past, most of that was shrimp farming, removal of trees, and, and now for palm oil plantation, also for coastal developments like hotels and roads, and in Africa in particular, extraction for fuel wood and for timber. So taking a simple projection of, of rates of loss, all mangroves would disappear within the next 100 years. In Ghazi Bay, the community has been harvesting mangrove wood for centuries. On the whole, local people who depend on their mangrove ecosystems are very well aware of how important they are. 
However, the challenge is to find means of conserving them, particularly to find income that will fund conservation. Many people in the area where we work are extremely poor, and that means relatively small amounts of money can make a major difference to their lives. Mark and a group of scientists decided to join forces with the local communities of Ghazi Bay to create a pioneering approach to protect the mangrove forest. Mikoko Pomoja, which means mangroves together in Swahili, is the world's first community-based mangrove conservation project that's funded by the sale of carbon credits. Wonderful. When we analyze for the organic matter and in turn the organic carbon in this soil, it's a good indicator of how much we continue to capture and store with, by protecting this forest. They found a way of making more money out of the forest by keeping it alive than by cutting it down. This is the major part of the carbon in a mangrove forest because you can see the high content, the roots in it, and a lot of organic matter. So the mangroves do a lot of this in capturing and storing organic matter within their soils. We convert the biomass to carbon and we're able to tell you how much carbon we have. This forest stores around 1,500 tonnes of carbon per hectare. This again is further converted to the carbon dioxide equivalents which are traded in the markets. They're selling this mangrove forest's ability to sequester carbon on what is known as the voluntary carbon credit market. Individuals and industries all create carbon emissions, especially in rich countries. To try to counter the damaging effect, people can calculate how many tons of carbon they emit and offset this by paying carbon capture initiatives, like planting trees, that can remove carbon from the atmosphere. It sounds simple, but it's far from perfect. Critics of carbon accounting say it's hard to accurately calculate how much carbon any one project is sequestering because there are so many varying factors to take into account. And there are other concerns too. Carbon offsetting is controversial because some people may be tempted to use it as an excuse for inaction on the climate emergency. And we're very clear that offsetting is one small part of our response to what we're facing in terms of climate breakdown. But it's got to be part of a broader um, and, co and coherent policy to get to a zero carbon world. And if done correctly, these carbon credits provide a financial incentive for communities to stop harvesting mangroves and start protecting them. The Makoko Pomoja project is verified to sell over 2,000 carbon credits each year. This corresponds to the extra carbon storage and sequestration their conservation ensures. Over the past five years, this has earned the surrounding villages more than $60,000, which the community has spent on clean water sources and supplies for the local clinic and schools, as well as forest rangers who guard this precious resource. And the initiative is reaping benefits for some of those who work on the ocean, too. <laughs> Mimi na furai ya kupanda mikoko kwa sababu mti unatakana upande na ule unasaidia mambo mengi madhara fulani yanasaidiwa na miti kwa kulingana vile tulivyoona kwa samaki pia mikokoni tukitega tunapata kwa hivyo pia hiyo pia itasaidi itasaidia kwa sababu kila kitu ni utaratibu kwa ngine sasa tumepanda lakini bado unaona ni paka pengine kikua miaka kutosha Climate change is the overwhelming challenge of our times, and small projects like this, they're only a drop in the ocean. However, if none of us attempt um, these projects, then nothing will happen. But Mikoko Pomoja is a pioneering model. Nearby villages are keen to replicate its success. And in Madagascar, a similar project is already underway. We can't hope to have the kind of world that I expected when I first started studying ecology as a 12-year-old birdwatcher. But that doesn't mean that we can't have 
a world full of beauty and wildness, but we have to fight hard for it. Scientists are only now starting to understand the importance of these majestic forests for the health of the ocean and the planet. Pioneers like Lillian and Mark are changing the relationship between local communities and these ancient mangroves. It's a model that could help protect ecosystems way beyond these shores. If you'd like to find out more about the greatest challenges facing the ocean and the people trying to solve them, then click on the link opposite. Or you can watch more from the Protected series by clicking on the other link. Don't forget to subscribe and thank you for watching.